One's lonely, two's a company, and three's a crowd, right? Not if you know how to adjust it all in the perfect proportion. You have been seeing this for a long time. A relation of four quantities A, B, C, and D, where this sign is used to show proportion, and it says the two ratios are equal. Using that, we concluded that the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means. This is very important. Now, the point is there were four values here, but what if we relate only three quantities A, B, and C like this? Then this C is called the third proportion, and we can find it simply by equating the product of the extremes and the means. Take a look at an example to see how we'd find this one. These two quantities are given, and we have to find out the third proportional. Let's say C. We can write the relation in proportion like this, where x plus y and c are the extremes, and x squared minus y squared is written as the means. We already know that the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means. Now that you have this form, it's very easy to isolate c by shifting this x plus y to the right side. Time to simplify. First, expand it by using this formula. So that we can cancel out the like terms. Here we get c equals to x squared minus y squared into x minus y. Do you see what I see? Yes, this can be expanded further by using the same identity again, and then these repeated terms can also be written as a square. Finally, we have the third proportional c. If the third proportional exists, shouldn't something called as the fourth proportional exist as well? That's exactly what we'll be looking at next. For that, simply consider four quantities A, B, C, and D. We can arrange them like this in proportion. Yes, nothing new. Except that this fourth quantity D is known as the fourth proportional. Let's see an example to learn how do we find it. We are given these three quantities. The fourth proportional is missing. To find it, let's first consider the fourth proportional as x this time, and then write these four quantities in proportion like this. Remember the magic formula: product of extremes equals the product of means. Use that to equate the product of the extremes and the means like this. Once done, it's time to isolate x by shifting a cubed minus b cubed to the right side, and now. All you need is to simplify this. Start by applying this identity that you see on your screen. Following that, our denominator a cubed minus b cubed will now become a product of these two terms. Slash slash, so satisfying, isn't it? And so we have x equals to a plus b upon a minus b. It's simplified enough to be declared as the required fourth proportion. This lesson used the first and second example to introduce you to the concept of the third and fourth proportion. What I expect from you next is to find and solve a third and fourth practice question for the third and fourth proportion each.